Oh, that's cute. That's very cute. Hello, everyone. We'll be starting shortly. Just welcome and greetings to all of you on Zoom and for those in person. Um, we are trying to um, track all those that we are reaching. So I will ask you um, on your identification if you can, um, if you are just a phone number, if you can uh, somehow indicate in chat who you are and what organization you represent. Uh, I have one phone number, 534-8244. Let us know um, who you represent. And then if on your name, uh, we don't have, like I can see Abigail from El Sistema, Cindy Scarberry. Um, let's see, um, OKC Improv, I see you, Rachel. But if we don't have who you're with, if you can um, edit that um, on your ID, on your Zoom ID, you just hover over and change it. And we'll get started in just a minute. Just, oh, sorry, I'm on mute again. This funding is open not just to Allied Arts member agencies, but to other arts 
any qualified arts nonprofit who meets the parameters. So again, I just wanna make sure that everyone who is joining us today, that we have you ID properly. If you missed me saying this a couple minutes ago, um, if you're joining us via Zoom, if we can make sure that we have your name and the arts organization that you're representing on your Zoom ID. You can just edit that by hovering over it and change and editing that for us real quick. We're trying to reach as many people as we can with this, and we just want to um, make sure if there are new people joining us that we have that recorded. Still have several people like to have just your name up there. All right, well, we're gonna jump in there and get things um, started. Uh, first, I just want to introduce our guest from the city of Oklahoma City, uh, Ryan Baker. He will be our liaison throughout this process, as well as Amanda Carpenter, who um, just got help, um, held up trying to fly back to OKC, something we're all getting, becoming accustomed to. Just yeah. You just gotta know when you're traveling, it's gonna be delay, delay, delay. So. Um, Amanda will be like our phone a friend if we have a problem that we can't answer. She's she's available via text. Um, and then I have Jennifer in my office, um, Jennifer Hidalgo O'Brien. Many of you know. If you don't, she's amazing. I don't do anything without Jennifer and Rob, our finance person. Rob Schultz is here with me. The three of us from Allied Arts will be um, administering this in partnership with the city of Oklahoma City, because what happened Tuesday was nothing short of historic. Um, certainly last year when we were able to secure 300,000 in CDBG funds in that partnership with the city that kind of laid the groundwork, we learned a lot. We learned that the city and Allied Arts are terrific partners. And um, we also learned that we had a lot to offer. We were able to spread those dollars among six different wards um, thousands of different people were impacted, jobs were replaced because of that. And so now we have a whole new task ahead of us, different dollars with different designations and different regulations. Um, and it is somewhat complicated. And so we want to make sure that everybody on the phone has a chance to ask questions about what may or may not be covered in this round of funds. Jeffrey, you want to say anything about the application will be fully opening live on May 4th, which is when next Wednesday or Wednesday. Application will be fully open May 4th. And please don't leave anything undone. Um, it kind of throws you out um, automatically. So everything that is asked, please do. There's also going to be um, a letter of as a station that you will have to sign that everything that you are providing is true and correct. Since these are government dollars, we have to have extreme oversight. Allied Arts already, that is our role with the dollars that, that we put out into the community. And this is one more level of security that we will be doing for um, these public funds. So everyone will be required to do that and to, to be able to show receipts and documentation to back up all of your requests. Um, Ryan and Jennifer, do you want to give any introductory opening remarks before we open it up for questions? Uh, hi, uh, well, I guess all I would say is that uh, if any of you were familiar with uh, the program that never mentioned uh, the CDG coronavirus or CDG CV, and forgive me, I'm probably going to unintentionally slip into talking in a lot of acronyms. So anyone in person or online, feel free to stop me. Uh, hopefully, I think this program was intended uh, at the federal level uh, to be more streamlined and more targeted. Uh, so I really look forward to working with Allied Arts uh, and uh, invariably with, with some of you that uh, can help you in your organizations. 
Um, I'll just cover cover basics if you didn't see it. Um, we do have the um, an overview of the grant program on our website with the eligibility requirements. So uh, first thing you have to meet the requirements uh, to submit as you would for any with any other LRS grant program. You have to be a 501c3. This also you can be a 50 um, C19. C19. Thank you. Um, uh, you know, be headquartered in Oklahoma City, provide services to residents of Oklahoma City, uh, have the current yeah. certificate of registration as a charitable organization with the state. You know, those are all our, our way to be in our team, you know, identify in the standing with the IRS. Yes, and identify as a multicultural nonprofit from your 990 um, as part of the taxonomy. Uh, and then on top of that, I mean, the, the big thing to be eligible for this is to demonstrate negative financial impact as of March 3rd, 2021. Um, and it can be to bring back employees you lost after that date, not contract, um, but full-time, part-time or seasonal. Uh, also for technology, uh, whether it's virtual programming or uh, lost revenue uh, in general, but, and everything has to be clearly demonstrated and you do have to also submit documentation to demonstrate that. Um, but the, even though the application is not uh, live yet, you can see those those requirements on our website right now. And with that, um, we're, we're happy to kick it to uh, anyone in attendance. If you have a particular item or a particular scenario that you want to run past us before you actually fill out the application. This time is designed for you for Q&A. Um, as we said, it's, it's a million dollars, nothing short of historic for Allied Arts as we've not had those public funds until that first CDBG of 300,000 last year. But it is our goal to um, get it out efficiently, effectively. Our timeline is essentially 2024, but we think that the needs um, and the losses among this group are so great that the million is likely to go quicker. When we did all of our studies, our research and our surveys, we definitely noted that our smaller and mid-sized budget organizations um, had more difficulty navigating through the effects of COVID than our larger budget organizations. And so the caps are designed with that in mind. So you will see that the smaller and mid-sized budget organizations have a larger percentage that you can apply for. Any questions from our group that we uh, can, can tell you if, if what you are thinking is a recoverable type of expense or a recoverable cost, lost um, wages or whatever. We will just ask each person that you will, you will have to be able to prove um, that, that it's lost and prove that it's lost after that date and that this was not covered by any other federal funds. So it can't be overlapped in that respect. What we did say um, previously in APIS Council, and I think we may have said it in our press release. Normally in our grant request, we don't want you to stack different items. On this, you will be able to include different items, not that they will all be forgiven or they will all be funded, but you can ask for several different things. So that's one thing that is new or different than what we normally do at Allied Arts. And then each one of those will have to be itemized as we're going through the process. Um, Allied Arts will vet all of them first and make sure that they're all qualified and good standing, all of that. And the city will have final say on that funding. So you have, may have one portion okay in one portion not, which is why you're going to have to be able to break those out. I'll add to that for the um, 
technology or the COVID mitigation that um, it does need the reimbursement, but the applications can be submitted for purchases your nonprofit would like to make, but haven't made yet, but you won't receive the funds until you pay for them. So when you're submitting it, you would submit invoices for you know projected costs for that camera you need to to um, to teach two children in the schools because you can't go into the schools yet, or you know whatever the technology example is. So. Um, and I, I had that question as early as this morning. I think um, Arts Council asked the question about technology, and, and technology is one of the cover um, items. If it helps you to go remote, if it helps you to continue your mission. But it has to be related to COVID, and you have to demonstrate that. In the yeah, it just can't be because you want to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, it specifically needs to uh, to be used to implement personal programming uh, or remote working technology. Those two are specifically uh, called out in the But, uh, you know, you have a tremendous amount of latitude uh, to, to determine, uh, you know, it's a, it's a need. It's a well, and as we are learning, I don't want to speak to all of this as past tense because we, we are still in, we are not, we're still in pandemic mode. Uh, 31 states had upticks just this past week. Um, so anything that you can do to help keep your audiences safe, your students safe, anything to ensure their safety, all of those are items that would be considered because we are still in pandemic times. One of the overall general categories uh, that is eligible is just COVID-19 mitigation efforts. So I think to that point, uh, yeah, you should think not only short-term past, uh, but also uh, I think short-term future as well. Absolutely. What are your needs going to be? Uh, going yeah, for, for summer camps, when you've got 1,500 kids attending your summer camp. If, just hypothetically, uh, there were a variant, a uh, small surge uh, come fall. Uh, what might your organization need uh, in order to continue operating as successfully as possible? And keep doors open and keep people employed. Yep. I'm trying to visualize this, and I'm, I'm thinking, you know, my little organization is multifaceted. So you could see changes reflected in the financial statement. So, you know, things thumbed that went down. Um, um, students that didn't attend the ministry program. Uh, you know, it's all, all these, these little things. And so, do you, do you try to uh, reclaim each one of those things? individually in your application, or is it a overall? I think Which the, the right. examples you described would be part of lost revenue. Yeah, so you would say, uh, since March 3rd, 2021, compared to pre-pandemic, we've seen a drop in individual donations in the amount of X. We've seen uh, fewer students um, uh, sign up for our programs, which resulted in a less of an amount of uh, decreased X tuition. And then you would, you know, then you would, you would describe all those things and the total would be, you know, maybe so $10,000. Yeah, so then that would be your amount. And that would be, a, all those instances would be able to lost revenue. But then if you also were like, well, we need um, uh, better lighting for our um, board Zoom calls because our board's of course stand, you know, we have a board relationship, you know, center meeting, then you could apply for that one too. And that's a, a future expense. Yes, but remember then you can't you won't get the money until you spend it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And so this covers at like one year period, like from March 20 to March anyway, you also have to March 3rd, 2021. So pandemic started March 21. And a lot of federal funds have already been designated for that time period. This is the second round coming in. The, the way somebody put it, um, 
but it was, it was kind of a profound thing. Um, well, it was just that that first one was to essentially stop the bleeding, and now the next one is to try to help people get on a path of growth and recover. I, I believe that date was when the American Rescue Act uh, uh, passed. So, so that was really why that started to fall off is because it was moving forward. Uh, yeah, you've got to start trying to. Because obviously in March of 2020, nobody's crystal ball could project how long it would last. And so they were trying to immediately get aid out there to address immediate needs. This is March 21 to March 22. Well, March 21, we technically have through 2024 to spend it, but it's a million dollars. So we show. We have documented over 50 million in losses for our arts community, so we guess that it will go quickly. But that's why we have also made requests to the county and to the state for these ARPA dollars for recovery and restart. So somebody asked to repeat the question. I think the question was, what is the time period that's covered? I'm just saying it's March 3rd, 2021 to December 2024. Rob's putting that in the chat for those of you um, on Zoom and in person. But it's actually December 1st. 21. Yeah. Um, another example that I want to give is just the mitigation efforts because I we were asking people for their ideas earlier. If you have to do um, filtration systems, uh, touchless waterfall faucets, touchless light switches, um, those are mitigation efforts. The air filtration systems for theater areas as well as classrooms where you will be putting in multiple kids or people. Uh, so any of those to keep things safe. The other question, which I thought was a unique one, were things, for example, that Arts Council of Oklahoma City may have had to do. Things that additional costs that they had to do to make people were kept safe. So not this most recent festival that was just happened, but the one that was 10 months ago. Um, Arts Festival usually utilizes like 5,000 volunteers, but could not do that because of the state health requirements. And so a lot of things they normally do like pouring wine out of the bottle. You couldn't do that. They all had to be single serve. Well, guess what? When you go from pouring five glasses out of one bottle to single serve, the price per item is greater. So if Peter could show that the price he had to pay to um, keep people safe was greater than it was the year before, whether it's in pouring that wine or whether it's he had to expand the festival another half block, which meant he had to hire additional security. So the security to cover that area was a result of them dealing with COVID and trying to keep people safe. That's a recoverable expense. We had a good question here. Um, what previous period are we comparing to? It's pre COVID, but what does that mean? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, there, there's no hard and fast uh, rule in terms of the time frame, but I think it's really you would want to illustrate uh, when you know it was business as usual uh, versus what has changed. Uh, hopefully, that makes general sense. Uh, to add on to that, could you also explain how revenue is defined, or is that also uh, up for interpretation? Uh, I mean, I, I think revenue is just money coming in generally. Yeah, I don't, I don't think there's, there's, uh, I don't know of any particular uh, definition uh, that, that's used by the federal government for that, but I, I think that's generally uh, the, the agreed upon approach. Who wants the question? Uh, Rita Craig with the Museum of Art. Yes, and I was one who just asked that 
question. So, I mean, could you uh, look at earned income, for example, or are we required to look at total revenue that includes everything? Or does it, is it all up for interpretation? No, I think it's earned and contributed. Yeah. yeah. There, there are no, I mean, there, there are no particular constraints that I know of uh, when it comes to what is or is not uh, revenue. Again, it's, it's predominantly just money coming in, period. Okay, because like the other uh, relief funds uh, applications provided very specific definitions for revenue that you had to follow to be within the parameter. It doesn't sound like there's any specific definition of revenue here. Uh, I'll double check, but not that I'm familiar with. I think uh, the nature of that difference is largely because that first program was built around a pre-existing program through uh, the Housing and Urban Development Administration. Uh, whereas this is more legislatively based, it's a you know, congressional decision, uh, so it doesn't have quite the uh, uh, snarl of uh, government and uh, federal requirements uh, associated with it, if that makes sense. Okay. And if I could, and this is Brenda Granger, and if I could also ask part of that question as well, on other grants we've applied for similar along the way, um, it said do not include any emergency money that you've already received as part of that earned and contributed that you just spoke of. Would that be the same on this? We subtract that out? It's federal money, absolutely. So uh, if, if you had federal money that has already, you've already received federal money that has addressed an existing need, that need cannot be met through this program. Uh, they just want to make sure that there's no duplication in terms of the federal money. Right. We don't want to double dip. We won't allow you to double dip. Or private money affiliated with federal money. Um, boy, that's a, that's a good question. Just define that. What do you mean? For example, um, money that we receive for CDBG is federal money. But the, so the grant that we receive is from Allied Arts, not from City of Oklahoma City CDBG. Right. right. It works a little bit differently on this program, but you're 100% right. Thank you. Thank you. And Tara has a question about the, how the funds are being allocated. We'll be using, I mean, Allied Arts 50 years of experience to certainly do all of the vetting. Um, we, I, I will say that I do believe the money is going to go first, I mean, go fast because it's a million dollars addressing a, over a $50 million loss. Um, because an item gets in doesn't mean it's going to be 100% fully funded. We will be looking at each one of those one by one. So that's what I'm saying. If you're stacking several things, one may be funded and then one may not. We also have to, um, we, we are trying to impact um, a, a large number of organizations. Uh, and that's why we kind of structured the percentages the way that we did. So I'm not going to um, go into a corner saying it's first cut or first serve. I'm just going to tell you that the money, I believe, will go quickly because we think the number of requests will once again outweigh the dollars made. And an application itself doesn't guarantee funding. Right, it's not, yeah, it's not guaranteed. Absolutely. That's why we have to vet all of them where we will be relying on our years of experience to, to do that and and work with the city to come to the final determinations with our um, designates there being both Amanda and Ryan. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's going to be really incumbent on you all to make sure that your documentation uh, is, is, is really in order. That's that. And, and I know that's probably giving a lot of people a little bit of heartburn right now. I, I, I understand. Um, I would say, you know, that's that's one of the huge reasons why uh, we're working with Allied Arts on this. So they can help you through all that process. Uh, and, you know, we'll do everything that we can sitting in uh, as well. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I just want to just mention if this helps at all uh, directly out of our agreement that uh, uh, some ways that you can demonstrate uh, uh, some of this decreased revenue. Uh, you can use gross receipts relative to pre-pandemic revenue. Again, let's zero in on that phrase pre-pandemic. That is a specific set period of time. That just means prior to the onset uh, of the pandemic. Uh, increased costs.
due to COVID, COVID mitigation measures taken, or challenges covering payroll, rent, or mortgage, or other operating costs. That'll probably cause, I think, more questions than answers. But again, they're trying to give you uh, uh, significant leverage. And when I say they, I mean capital T, they, the federal government. Uh, they recognize the impact, not just to nonprofits generally, but specifically to arts organizations. And, and if you all will forgive me for just a second, I want to read you something uh, out of something that's very exciting uh, called the Coronavirus State and Local Fiscal Recovery Fund's uh, final rule. Uh, and it just says this, among nonprofits that collect fees for services, the median revenue amount collected from such fees fell by 30% from 2019 to 2020, with arts organizations experiencing a 50% decline. That is the federal government articulating that in their regulations. So there is a, a high level recognition uh, that the need is significant. Uh, so you know, I want to provide any reassurance to you all that, that you know, we at the city are going to be working hand in glove with allied arts to review everything that you submit and make sure that we get the money to you uh, as quickly as possible uh, with the caveat that they've got the ultimate cost. And just like with CDBG, I mean, the turnaround was very professional and efficient um, with the city. And so it will work similar just in terms of that turnaround. But what I will say is with the application deadline opening um, early May, we will be turning those over um, one month worth of requests to the city for review. And then they will have to have, I don't, I don't want to say for them that the, the period of time, but it's as quickly as possible. As quickly yeah. as possible, they will. We'll turn those around and we will see payment that quickly. And understand that that review process is because this is federal money. And uh, even though we have we are contracting and working with Allied Arts, uh, we ultimately are responsible uh, as the city for the use of these funds. So it's a it's a trust but verify step that has to happen. And Tara had a uh, Tara Burnett had a question about how much uh, you'd recommend they apply for. I mean, you can apply for it. As I said, it's it's we 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 had to put a cap on it, and uh, we're going to see the number of organizations that apply. We will take be taking several things into consideration. I mean, ultimately, it's what you're trying to uh, recoup and the, your ability to demonstrate. Yeah. That's yeah. the most important part. It is. And just making sure that your applications are complete, correct. Um, you know, Jennifer, because we have so many people needing this money, um, it's not going to be up to, to Jennifer to chase you for a document that's missing. It's just your application would not then be considered if it's not complete. I, I would dare say that I know that, you know, the phrase has come up first come, first serve. Please, uh, and I, I know that there might be a little bit of panic, some eagerness, uh, but it, it really is important to just be very methodical and thorough with putting your application together. Uh, that will make, I think, everybody's job uh, much easier and be more advantageous for you and your organization. And I want to be clear on uh, the one from Tara at uh, Open the City Bill, that question that. That is the amount for their budget size organizations, and it's different based on your budget size. So that is not the amount, the amount for everyone. Please, Jennifer, do you have that slide that you can put up there? Which one? Oh, All the percentages. Uh, I think it's the last one. Hold just one second as we grab that slide real quick. They say can share screen. Yeah. The, app, the application is May 4th. That's when it opens. Wednesday, May 4th. Okay. All right, so for everyone that's uh, on with us via Zoom and in person, uh, you can certainly see uh, where your um, budget.
budget falls in. Yes, thank you, Rob. And there's a question about uh, could be these funds we used to pay contractors. No, no, that was the one classification. We we rallied to put in seasonal help, and that was included, thankfully, because with arts organizations, we know it's very unique and different. That's why when we're doing comparisons of years for every one of our arts organizations, you have different seasons, different high periods, low periods, depending on a major exhibit coming in or a major show. Uh, we understand that. So just look for the one that could be as easily compared as during non-COVID times that matches that same time period to come up with those losses. Um, and as I said, we, were, we, we did request contract because we know there's a lot of contract. We did, it did not fall within the guidelines, but seasonal did. Seasonal employees. Seasonal employees. And so I just want to reiterate while we're looking at this slide that it, it isn't necessarily that uh, you know if you if you meet uh, whichever category you might be in, it, it doesn't mean that you can just put in an application and say uh, we would like to get uh, twenty percent of our operating budget back. Uh, it, it, these caps exist, but they are still reliant on you being able to demonstrate uh, uh, documented need up to that percentage of the budget. Need and loss. Need and loss. Thank you. Any other questions from the crowd there? So happy to see so many of you on. Again, we're just celebrating the partnership. Very grateful to have a mayor and city council that recognizes the importance of what all of you do every day, the impact you make in the community. Uh, I don't know if you saw the article in the paper today, but um, Mayor Holt was, was quoted about that very specifically, and then also um, Aubrey was quoted about this tremendous partnership. So uh, they see us, they hear us. Um, we, we've been um, very much advocating for all of our arts groups ever since the announcement of Art the Dollars came out. We've been advocating, and so we're just super happy to even be in this position with, with Ryan and the city to be getting this money out. Is there another question? Yeah, there have been a couple of questions about seeing, getting the applications uh, questions ahead of time so they can discuss and prepare. And uh, Tanya at Prairie Dance asked if we'll have access to the recording. I think we will post this whole one. Yes, we're recording this right now and then we'll post it on the website after, after our 2 p.m. session. Oh, and in terms of questions in advance, okay. Okay. Um, on the, you might answer that Ryan or Rob. I'm sorry? Do you want to answer the salary? I mean, if you have an HR company who could verify that, if you have uh, budgets that verify that. Um, prior pay stub, termination papers, and hiring papers, depending on the scenario. Any solid documentation of this? I would say the most clear cut, and again, it might be for large organizations, if you have a payroll company, they will be able to produce the documentation that we need. Let me just show that there was exposition was filled prior to pandemic, and that you brought it back after March 1st, 2021. Yeah. 3rd, 2021. So if you brought it back, October of 2020, that doesn't fall into this program. Well, that is one scenario, but uh, I did run one paint pain past, and in this, in this case, it would be covered. Um, my example was with Lyric Theater. Uh, Lyric 
theater had to hire a COVID mitigation, or a COVID expert um, to be on staff to keep actors, everyone safe. And even though that person was hired, any of their payroll after March 3rd is eligible because they go kind of under the COVID mitigation classification. And we're required because of equity, right? Yes, a requirement because of equity act. But that would be more COVID mitigation efforts as Absolutely. opposed to the yeah. employee. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying the yeah. salary came up with, yeah. with this salary. Well, yes, because it was for the purposes of COVID mitigation. That salary, even though that person was hired prior, that salary would be covered. So I'd imagine that once you all start for, sort of figuring out what documentation you need, uh, questions open up our eyes. And that's, that's, that's why we've got allied arts, and me too. So uh, yeah, we'll help navigate any way that we can. And, and the order we would like to have that is for it to come to Allied Arts first and then us to try to um, us to try to find the answers to all those questions for you as quickly as possible. And if it's something that we can't and that we need to bring in um, the council of uh, the city of Oklahoma City, we will be doing that. <laughs> so the phone calls come directly to Allied Arts. That is our, our role in this. Yes. Um, and did we pass some of these out in the uh, in the uh, it's also in the press release too that we sent to everyone, right? It's not. It's, I mean, the information is. Not oh, yeah. the uh, and this information is on the on the website too. Uh, yes, please go to our website as well. These are all there. The timeline, when it opens, the time periods covered. And I think that's what we we opted for the month. We accept them, you know, we're going to submit them to the city in the month. So there is time for you to ask questions. And, you know, I, I, I guess you can email me if you want to see the questions because um, the city is going to look at the look, look at it first. Um, and then also, I really don't know how to make it live without making the application live. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so you can email me. Um, but um, that, that's what we went for the month, not weekly. So that first week is like a wild, wild west kind of situation. Have just a couple more minutes, but um, say another question. Yeah, did we just respond to city? Yeah, I, okay, yeah, I said email Jennifer and stuff. <laughs> yeah, and please remember our letter to the patients all day Monday and Tuesday. So, I mean, I will get back to everyone because, <laughs> yeah, this is going to be literally in here. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my computer. <laughs> Not seeing any more questions. Uh, we do have another session starting at two o'clock. I, I, the format it will be exactly the same. But if you did want somebody else from your staff, um, oh wait, no, that was in person. Yeah. Yeah. That one is is one hundred percent in person. I know we have a couple people coming. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank you for attending. We don't know if we will need another town hall. If there uh, is a need for another town hall, uh, we will work with the city to just arrange a time and make sure that everyone's questions are answered. But a second town hall will not likely happen before the portal opens on board.
Wow. Uh, again, we're thankful for all, all of the participants joining us and here in person. Uh, thankful to Ryan, who's taken on this big task. And uh, we just want to uh, make it smooth, fair, and equitable. And that's that will be our intent in, in partnering with this. So if there are no further questions, we will get ready for the next session then. Thank you all. Yes, thank you all so much. Let's spend this money and put it in.